Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is a Let Me Bore You to Sleep number 55 these sessions are even older than me by six years well not six years but you know anyway if you just join me this is right at the beginning I've literally just started and here's Andre saying hello it's my little boy so if you're listening to this on soundcloud or spreaker or itunes or spotify or iHeartRadio, wherever you're listening if you're listening on the podcast on my website if you want to see andre just check out the video on youtube and um, i'm holding him in my in my arms right now right at the beginning of this session and I think he he actually believes that I've got him a new ferret and I've stuck it to my chin so uh, he keeps rubbing himself against my my chin like I'm a another ferret And so I've got a couple of people saying hello just as I start. Hi Andrea, uh, Cassie um, saying it's the middle of the day, middle of the day for her, which I understand it's uh, it's about twelve thirty in the morning here. But I realise that it's it's not always going to be something you're going to want to listen to live if you're not wanting to go to sleep because the whole point of these is for me to just be as it's not so much be as boring as I can be just be in my natural self really and luckily that's incredibly boring so that's a good thing I only listen to this Hello. Hello. I listen to this when, or watch this session when you can safely close your eyes because this sleep session may cause drowsiness. And now I'm covered in his hairs. Andre's. Um, He's shedding his hair at the moment, his coat. Not quite sure why. I suppose there's a new coat growing in for winter. So he's suddenly getting rid of the old summer coat. So he's gone a lot whiter. His, his, uh, his hair is a lot whiter along his back than it was. But he's he's being quite good but he's he's been a bit naughty this evening by going into the kitchen cupboard and knocking all the tins of um just the tins of, I mean I don't know what I've got in there there's a tin of soup because I know quite a few months ago I bought some tins of soup but they weren't just tomato soup I think I bought maybe two tomato soup two chicken soup they weren't for the soul they were just regular soups two possibly cocktail soups a true story I actually when I was when I was younger, when I was a kid, I genuinely believed that um, 
cocktail soup was exactly as it sounded and so I didn't used to drink eat it or drink it but there you go so I'm just gonna talk boringly <laughs> uh, about whatever so I'm hoping that Andre will calm down a little bit but I think he's He's wide awake at the moment for some reason. It might be because I've got a floodlight shining in the room. I don't think anything could sleep in here. It'd be like, it's kind of like trying to sunbathe, not with the sun out, but literally on the surface of the sun. It's just a bit too bright, you know. So, I think what other tins have I got in my soup I'm trying to not in my soup in my cupboard I'm trying to visualize it and there's I think there's a tin of peaches but the problem with that tin of peaches is that I need to use a tin opener to open it and I'm a fan of the ring pull tins that you can open them just by pulling the you know pulling the the ring and I like rings I like to put my finger inside the ring and just pull and it just comes off easier but the tin opener I find it's a little just especially the tin opener I've got is just not doesn't do it for me doesn't quite do it for me. Um, yeah, I've had some. I was going to say I've had some bad experiences with tin openers, but that's a bit of a bit dramatic, really. But I have um, had experiences with tin openers that are just, you know, where the tin opener slips. And I used to work in catering, and it's not a town. It's actually in catering as in food and Kettering is a town uh, where in in England but Kettering although they might say they might call it Kettering where they live I don't know quite what the accent is in that particular region but one of the good things about working in Kettering is the tin openers are really good and then gen they might have if you live if you work somewhere fancy now they might be uh, electric tin openers but I never worked anywhere that had that but what we had was it'd be on the side of the counter and quite often the tins would be really big big tins they're not just small tins of um, beans they'd be proper commercial size tins really big 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 tins but there'd be this tin opener and you'd you'd clamp it and you'd turn the massive handle it reminds me a little bit about um, I don't know if you remember the film Conan and Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger was pushing this big thing around and around this big handle and that's how he got all muscly it's a little bit like that but in the form of a tin opener uh, didn't didn't make me didn't make me muscling at all. So it's pretty yeah, but it turned, that's the point. It turned round. I'm trying to think what else turns round. I suppose it's a little bit like a a car jack thing, you know when you try and undo a a, a nut from a the wheel of a car and you turn the big wheel round and that the big like handle and I suppose the longer the handle is, the easier it is the less pressure it puts the less strength is needed from the participant involved in the activity of turning that handle um, that we're discussing depending on what it is because it amazes me you know I look at some of these uh, technical uh, documentaries you know, like on uh, 
technology or engineering and it's amazing how something so heavy can be lifted by a pulley system where it ends up where there's just one person can just turn a handle with one hand and the whole thing works you know just with a pulley system so it's the way it's balanced balancing weights and taking the pressure off the person and how things can change you know just it's so easily you can make that maneuver and move something to a place that you don't need it anymore but it's, it's not needed so in this instance it would be perhaps a, a barrel of oil or a barrel of beer or a piano lifting something into a warehouse but because pianos are big so maybe carrying it from outside the building all the way up with a pulley system and I think of pianos I think of that situation and I, I remember the old uh, Lauren Hardy film where they're pushing that piano up all the steps into a a mansion and they just keep struggling to get the piano up there and have lots of mishaps along the way yeah that's one of my favorite scenes from Lauren Hardy although I quite like I quite like a lot of uh, Lauren Hardy films because they're just really funny and clever I just really enjoyed watching them. I got this from a friend today. It's a Barrett dip and dab. And basically, it's got a little a little lolly lollipop stick inside, and sherbet. It says sherbet dip with a tasty strawberry flavor lolly. And then it says at the bottom, no artificial colours and flavours. So I haven't had this since I was at school, probably. And I don't remember being worried about artificial colours and flavours back then. Or maybe kids are nowadays. Maybe it's... And then at the, at the back, it's really going into it, saying, no artificial colours and flavours suitable for vegetarians not suitable suitable for children under 36 months and uh, when I was at school I don't think vegetarians really existed oh, I'm sure they did but I'd never heard of them never heard of a vegetarian Was it was just it was, it was uh, it wasn't really a a, pop, a popular lifestyle choice back then. I'm sure during the sixties and it probably really was, but and lots of Buddhists would not eat meat and various religious you know kind of things. But I don't ever remember vegetarianism when I was a child. I don't remember waiting in the canteen and the canteen star saying who's got the veggie meal? That was my impression of Doris that worked in the canteen at my school. Who's got the veggie meal? She used to talk like that. Very friendly. I remember I used to say Hi Doris, and she looked back at me with a twinkle in her eye, and she'd say, who's got the veggie meal? Because that's all she said, she didn't say anything else. But as they say, uh, a broken clock is right five times a day, and uh, she she often got it right because Actually, it didn't happen, did it? I'm just remembering I'm saying that it didn't happen. Yeah, no, she didn't ever say that. 
I made that bit up. That's a problem. The thing is with telling lies, it's apart from being fun, it's it's a really great way to get get <laughs> to get things. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's I don't bother with telling lies. It's not because of any kind of like moral thing really. I just don't see the point outside of this situation. Of course, I lie all day long, tell silly stories and just make stuff up as well as telling the truth. But uh, I'll actually correct myself sometimes. I'll talk to someone and say, oh yeah, it's... Uh, it was freezing outside, and I think, oh, I'm exaggerating. It's probably 98 degrees, or no, what would it be? No, three degrees or two, you know, whatever the degree is below zero or above zero, depending. Because it's, it's all changed. It's all changed since I was a kid. When I was a youngster, at school, even in the 90s when I was in my 20s. When it was hot, a temperature would be in the 90s. You know, it's sort of 88 degrees, it's 92 degrees outside. It's really hot, it's 94 degrees. That kind of stuff, like, hottest day ever since yesterday or since time began. Let's have a cup of tea. No, it's too hot for a cup of tea. But Jason, don't you realise that tea, a hot drink's a great thing to drink when you're hot because it cools you down. I've tried it, it doesn't. It's a lie, another lie. How would drinking a hot drink? Uh, I got another what? I have a big hot bath, that'll cool me down. No, it won't. It makes you sweat even more. Uh, what if I put more clothes on? That'll cool me. No, it won't. It'll be hotter. What if I run around in the garden with a uh, covered in plastic, you know, in the, the, the cell cellophane? I was like, no, you'll just sweat and be very uncomfortable. Make sure you tie your legs separate, otherwise you can't walk. And what if I just run, jump up and down for five hours? No, that won't calm. That won't cool you down. It won't. But I thought sweating cools us down. Yeah, but when it sweats naturally, causing yourself to sweat. What well, so if I go into a sauna and make me sweat? That will cool me down, then, won't it? No, it won't. Won't cool you down going into a sauna. What about if I jump into some icy water after being in the sauna? That will cool me down. Yeah, that that would that would probably shock your entire system as well. But yeah temporarily but yeah that'll, that will cool you down but actually you won't feel it as being cold because you'll go from hot to freezing and it'll feel just like lukewarm when you do it oh what can I do to cool down then glass of cold water maybe maybe take off some of the layers the layers what layers you know, your clothes. Why don't you just call them clothes then? Why wipe your fancy and call them layers? I don't think calling clothes layers is fancy at all. So when you say layers, are you talking like, like an, uh, an onion? Like we've got many, many, many layers and if you take one layer off, there's another layer to, that you can see. And No, I'm talking about clothes, just taking your clothes off. Nothing about onions. Onions are not involved. But you were talking about food earlier. You were talking about tin openers. And yeah, I know, but I wasn't going to mention onions. But you can see the connection though, can't you? Onions, tin opener, both in a kitchen. I said a tin opener doesn't necessarily have to be in a kitchen. Well, where else would it be? What, in the toilet? I said, well, no. You can have a tin opener and a bottle opener 
all within the same instrument. So you could be in your living room and pop off the top of your beer. Ah, didn't think about that. You don't think about everything, do you? Well, I think about quite a few things. Like what? Well, right now I'm thinking about the Smurfs. Why are you thinking about the Smurfs? Well, I just remember playing the Smurfs game when I visited my uncle. And I remember that trip because I was probably about 14 at the time and I was about to, it was, yeah, it was the, just before the summer holidays and we had this two week period at school where we could do all these um, really fun things and we just chose what we wanted to do and I chose uh, cake decorating because I was already doing baking anyway as a subject so I chose to do cake decorating and I was going to be doing it with my friend and you know, loads of other kids and I was quite looking forward to it because it was a completely different situation no maths, no geography and hopefully you know, I thought it would be fun and there was a girl that I quite liked and she was going to be doing it as well so I was you know really looking forward to it and then I went home so I think I started on the Monday or something happened but anyway I came home so I think I started on the Monday I came home and my stepmom said that we were going to visit my uncle for a week or whatever. So I kind of missed out on that cake decorating course. Well, it wasn't a course, but it was just a, I think it might have been for a week, but it was, a, it was, it was something that I was looking forward to doing. I thought it'd be quite artistic, um, fun you know I haven't got much memories of doing anything particularly fun at school and I think that would have been one of them but it was fun going to visit my uncle he lived in a big house he was really lovely and he had he had a wife and my aunt I suppose and he had a little daughter who was younger than my brother so at that time my brother would have been about six so she was probably four four or five there wasn't a lot of difference but she was absolutely obsessed with the jungle book the movie you know the the animated the original jungle book the disney one she absolutely loved that film and had to watch it over and over and over and over again please remember to like if you like this video and subscribe and all that stuff over and over and over again so she used to um it luckily because he lived in this big house she'd hog the living room and I, after probably the third time I watched The Jungle Book, uh, I worried for her safety because I couldn't handle it anymore. It was just a bit too much. So I, I went into a different room and my uncle had all these videos and that I could watch. He had a television, big television there. But he had an Atari system, which I didn't have at home. And there was a few games I suppose what was it space different space war games space invaders probably uh, Tetris I don't know I forget the different names of the Pac-Man 
but he had one that I really liked called Smurfs. So it was really just a a standard. Uh, what do they? I don't forget what they call it. Levels, layers. You know, a level game or a layers game. Layers. You're going about layers again. I'm not levels. Different levels. And like um, Donkey Kong and that kind of thing. But with this, you'd jump over various things and climb up trees and jump on um, toadstool, to toadstools, toadstools, mushrooms, and avoid other things. And and as it played, there was the tune, the Smurf tune. Do 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 and it went on and on and on and on. Sometimes I had to take a break from that and go and watch the Jungle Book just to take a break from the Smurf theme tune. Other times I'd have to turn the volume down because I just it was a bit a little bit too much. I felt for the safety of the television I just it was getting you know fucking angry so I really liked that game what I liked about it was the joystick of the Atari system because if I remember it was a joystick and it was like a like a black box and you could fit it into the palm of your hand and there was a joystick and there was a, a red and there's a few, couple of red um, buttons either side and there might have been a, a red button on top as well I forget it's a long time ago it's uh, 1984 roughly so that's, that's over 12 years I used to have a friend that used to correct me I'd say that oh it's over 12 years so well actually it's uh, 34 years I said exactly so I was right then weren't I it's over 12 years no but it's 34 years yeah 34 years is over 12 years uh, sometimes steam used to come out of his ears and he'd jump up and down don't know why I'm trying to think what else happened on that trip. I had some pasties and see my uncle was really, really generous. He always bought me and my brothers toys, but like really good toys. And I think once he bought me a keyboard, like an Atari keyboard. Um, but that's not really got anything to do with pasties. But where we lived, they sold the best pasties ever best pasties I've ever eaten any time ever in my life were at this um, I guess I don't know if it was a pasty shop but it was a, a place that sold pasties which is I guess quite a good place to buy pasties from it might have just have been a normal bakery I can honestly uh, say that I don't know it might might have been it might not have been that it could have been something else I mean uh, I don't I kind of don't like the idea of it being a supermarket now, I've got nothing against supermarkets but I always felt that these pasties were something special that they were somehow magical and 
not magical as in I'd eat them and suddenly I could fly walk through walls or I don't know make my toenails grow whatever magic powers you might wish for yourself it just they felt magically tasty like much 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 more delicious than any pasty I'd ever had before and even to this day I was going to say even to this day I can still taste them but I can't how could I taste something that I had 34 years ago that'd just be lying wouldn't it I mean I could say I remember I remember what the tuna fish tasted like that I had you know if I first had something let's say when I was 19 and I can remember that tuna fish taste but that's because I had tuna fish a couple of days ago and you know it was still it's quite a quite a pungent smell so I, I could still smell it after I'd eaten it it's as if it was following me around but I don't necessarily remember the actual original smell of that tuna fish from 30 or 20 29 years ago because that would be 30 years ago, 29 years ago when I was 19 what would that make me, 19, so I was 19 in 1989 but I turned 20 at the end of August 1919 so 1990, Two thousand. So that's ten years to two thousand. Two thousand and one. Two thousand and two. Two thousand and three. Two thousand and four. Two thousand and five. Two thousand and six. 2007 2008 2009 2010 so that's 20 years 2011 2012 2013 2014 2015 2016 2017 2018 so that's 38 years since I was 19. Wow. 28 years. Did I say 28 or 38? 28. 
Because if it was 38, that would have made me 10, 9, 28. So I left school in 1986. So what is it now? It's 2018. So I left school when I was 15. So I was 15 in the end of August 1985. And then 1986, I left school in about April time. So I'm just thinking it's now November 2018. So how months, how many months since April? So April, so it's May 2018, June 2018, July 2018. And 18 August 2018 September 2018 October 2018 November 2018 so that's seven months plus however many years it's been. So, just trying to think. So April, so Nineteen ninety five, nineteen ninety six. So that's ten years. Nineteen ninety seven, nineteen ninety eight, nineteen ninety nine. 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006 so that's 20 years 2007 2008 2009 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 
2014 2015 2016 so that's 30 years 2017 2018 so that's 32 years and 7 months since I left school sometimes trying to I had these uh, dreams sometimes where I, I revisit the school that I went to and I try and remember the the outlay of the school so I remember when I first went there I was tiny and I think I was what would I have been it was 1981 um, so that would be probably yeah, September 1981 so I turned 11 years old in 1981 so I was, I was literally probably a few weeks after my 11th birthday and some people that were in the same year as me, they turned 12 in September. So I had some people who were nearly a year older and a year bigger. And as far as I am aware, I was the youngest person in my year. However, here's an interesting fact. When I was about seven, I lived in the house before my nan and granddad lived there. We, me and my, my dad, my stepmom, my oldest brother, my other brother that was older but not the oldest, but younger than the one that was older than him, and then my little brother came along and we lived there before my nan and granddad moved in and then we went and lived in a, a different place a different house but my best friend at that time was called Ian and he had exactly the same date of birth as me same age, same day of birth. We were born in different parts of the country, so we weren't twins. But um, we were the same age, exactly, apart from, I don't, I don't know. Some people know what time they were born, but I, I don't know. I think, um, I think my my mum said that I was born during the adverts, whatever that means. So I don't remember the, the well. I'm not going to remember, am I, the exact day? But when I was at school, because I moved to a different house from where I was before, my nan and grand had moved in there, and we lived around the corner from my friend Ian who had the same exact date of birth as I did and we were best friends but we were going to the same school together it was a junior school and when we moved I moved to a different junior school which meant I still kept in contact with him for a while but then as time goes by we move on, he had kids, you know, um, 
then we both went to different high schools and so I don't know if it's true or not but I, I reckon and I imagine that he was also the youngest person in his year that's what I think because I was the youngest in my year and I had the same day of birth as him so because he has he also had the same day of birth as me I imagine that he also was the youngest in his year because when he started high school it was also in September uh, 1981 and he I imagine again I have to just this is a guessing game really that he was surrounded by people his that were a lot older than him some of which were maybe nearly a year older than him and had their 12th birthday in September so they were a year older and a year bigger in some cases but I don't remember ever discussing this with him you know, when it came to going to high school because I didn't have really much contact with him really after I left the house that I used to live in before my nan and grand had moved there but we used to discuss having the same date of birth on numerous occasions because it was because it was so interesting and it's it's kind of quite unusual to have a friend who has exactly the same date of birth um, but we weren't we weren't twins we had different parents Plus he had blonde hair. I don't know what time we were, he was born. He might have told me. I got this idea that maybe he did know. But maybe he didn't want to embarrass me by telling me. Because he knew that I didn't know. And During the adverts is a bit of a vague you know, time zone, as it were. I feel if I knew what program my mum was watching, that would make more sense. I think she was talking about the birth, not the conception, anyway. So, in 1981, I'm not sure how long ago that is now, but I started school. So 1981. Let's say 1982, 1983, 1987 1989 so that's 10 years Two nineteen ninety seven nineteen ninety eight nineteen ninety nine 
2000 2001 so that's 20 years 2002 2003 2004 2005 2006 2007 2008 2009 2010 2011 So that takes us to 30 years. Two thousand and twelve, two thousand and thirteen, two thousand and fourteen, two thousand and Fifteen, two thousand and sixteen, two thousand and seventeen, two thousand and Eighteen. So that's thirty seven years. So how many months plus? So if it was September nineteen eighty one, October. 1981 November 1981 so That's quite a few years since I was that little boy wearing a tie and a shirt, a little shirt that I could probably struggle to fit on top of my head. It was so little. Not that I'd walk around in a 11 year old boy's shirt, that would be strange on my head. But I was really small back then. Very, very short, very tiny really compared to everybody else. I don't want to say everybody else, I don't mean the entire world, I mean there were babies smaller than me, there were nine year olds smaller than me, and somewhere there probably were eleven year olds smaller than me. 
just not in my school, which was was pretty much been the focus of this particular topic, you know. When I think about the the layout of the school and which entrances that there were. So facing the school, there was was, quite a big building and there was a wall in front of it, probably about five foot high, maybe five foot three inches. maybe even six foot, I'm not sure. But there was a a gap where people would walk in the front and where the teachers would park their cars and there was a front entrance for teachers to to go in there and I I imagine also for, uh, you know, uh, parents to go in there as well. And uh, but not for the pupils. Pupils would go in either side, so there was a side entrance on either side of the school. Sometimes I'd go in on the left side, and sometimes I'd go in on the right side. I think it would depend on where my class was. If I had my uh, main classroom that I had to go to every morning for register, if that was closer to the left entrance, then that might have been the classroom that I went to. But if the, the classroom was closer to the right entrance, I might go in that way. But there was also other entrances as well. There was an entrance through the car park, which would lead to a different section of the school. Uh, The assembly room would be there. And there was also a room for drama, a special room for drama and dancing and things like that. The big assembly room was also used for drama, for performances, because there was a big stage. Uh, we used to go in there, break times, and uh, there'd be a tuck shop, and you could, you know, because sometimes it was raining, not not in the hall, but outside, and it's not always nice to go outside when it's raining. Especially, you know, you're stuck in the same clothes all day long. It's not like being at work. You can't just take your underpants off during your break time and put them on the radiator to dry out. Can't do that at school. So I used to sort of try and keep dry if at all possible. Although sometimes I'd get a bit wet on the way to work, uh, to work, to school. And... Because that's the thing about, sometimes I'd walk to school, sometimes I'd cycle on my bicycle to school. And although cycling technically, you know, it's, it's a much quicker journey to get to school, I still seem to get wetter because in a sense you're collecting more you're collecting the water quicker, maybe. And also there's the backsplash from the other cars. And there's the, the water and the puddles and, you know, maybe riding into the, you know, closer to the curb so that the cars could overtake. But then riding through the puddles 
and getting wet feet. Whereas if I'd have walked on the pavement and just walked, you know, instead of cycling, I might have ended up being less wet. But it's hard to do a comparison on the same day. You know, I couldn't, well, there wasn't enough time to cycle into school, cycle home again, and then walk into school. Maybe get some change clothes and, and then just compare the two sets of clothes once I arrived at school again to see which set, set was the most wettest. There wasn't time for things like that. I mean, usually first thing in the morning when I was actually sitting in the classroom waiting for the teacher to come in and call out our names to check that we were there, I'd be doing my homework for the next lesson that I didn't do the previous evening. And I found that when I was at school, as long as I handed in homework and just made something up, it seemed to be, the rule seemed to be it's better to hand in uh, a bit of toilet paper than to hand in nothing. And of course, I'm, I don't mean literally hand in toilet paper, because detention may follow that action but just a hand in stuff made up so uh, if the question was tell us about something amazing that's happened you know interview interview your granddad interview your granddad over the weekend and you know write it down and then present it on Monday morning And what I would do is just come in on Monday morning and just write down a bunch of makeup stuff. Not makeup as in eyeliner and, you know, blusher and lipstick, because that wouldn't have really uh, suited talking about my granddad in that way, because he really wasn't that much into makeup. But he missed out on all the the YouTube tutorials that are about. Maybe he would have enjoyed them, I don't know. I doubt it though. It wasn't really his thing. But I just make stuff up. Besides, I only really had two conversations with my granddad. And one was about boxing and the other was something about cleaning the toilet after I'd finished with it. I can't remember, something like that, but I didn't he wasn't very talkative to me anyway. He's a very he's one of those uh silent you know, strong, silent men, women, you know, people, types, whatever you want to, how you describe it. And him and my grand, my nan actually moved into the house that we used to live in when I was younger. I lived there for about a year, year and a half maybe. And uh, yeah, they moved in as well, not at the same time. But I think it was we moved out the same weekend that they moved in. So we probably, I'm reckoning we probably moved out on the Saturday, made sure that everything was left from that house by the end of the Saturday and then on the Sunday 
my nan and granddad moved their belongings. That's what I, I imagine happened. But I can't be sure because um, I, w I was too busy thinking about watching the Bionic Man and Mork and Mindy and Monkey. That was a TV show I really liked, Monkey. If you don't know what Monkey is, Google it. You may think, I know what a monkey is. I've seen documentaries on monkeys. I've been to the zoo. No, this was actually a television program and it was special. It was absolutely brilliant at the time. Sometimes I'd leave out of the left side of the school, other times out of the right side. But the outlay of the school was very much, I'll, I'll give you an example. So we'd go in, go in the left side, the left gate, although it was open, it wasn't a gate, it was just a, well, there wasn't anything there. It was a wall that stopped. So I guess that's just a gap, isn't it? It was a gap. So we'd walk in the gap. And where does a gap start and where does a gap stop when there's space? This is space and a gap. It seems quite a, a similar, similar uh, thing. So go in the left side, on the left hand side of the wall there'd be a, a big bike rack where you could park your bikes, not you but whoever was at the school and you could carry on walking and it was quite a long walk but there was all these classrooms on the right hand side as you was outside the building looking in and you could walk down and then eventually you end up on the grass and you could walk across the field and there's a big playing field, really big. And But you could also turn right and there was an entrance. And in the middle of that bit, you could walk through the entrance and then you could walk out of the entrance again and walk all the way around the other side. Or you could walk in that entrance and turn right and walk down through into the school. Or you could turn left and there was this, it was kind of like a lecture room, you know, with chairs, seats um, that kind of went up in as they went along. So if you was at the top, you were looking down. Um, not that I really went in there that often, but I did watch a, what's his name? Harrison Ford's film, Raiders of the Lost Dark. I watched that there and uh, some other weird stuff. It was, a not, it was an okay score, really. Yeah. I'll probably talk more about schools in the future, maybe talk about my experiences and that, but that's probably enough for one day. That's enough excitement for one session. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I'll speak to you later or see you later. And the next session of Let Me Boy to Sleep will be number 56, I think. I think, I think, I think. Stay relaxed. Be calm. Be happy. See you next time.
Tot ziens later.